hey everyone welcome back to my youtube channel from today i'm going to start another series on dynamic mesh here is the window of dynamic mesh phone and sysfluent in dynamic mesh we have two windows one is mesh method how do we do meshing and the second set of options which describe the motion of the mesh i will go through all these options one by one in different videos in today i will start with layering so let's move to ansys meshing first let me show you the animation of render results here is the movement of the top wall of the mesh and the layers are being added and removed as the wall move up and down here is the velocity um, movement or the velocity field in the pipe and here is the pressure field in the pipe as the wall move up and down so let's see how we can achieve all these results. I have created very simple geometry of rectangular pipe. Let's create mesh and some name selection which we could use in ANSYS Fluent. This one is our inlet. This one is our outlet. This one we call it bottom and uh, this one let's call it uh, moving wall in this video we want to move this wall up and down as we will have some flow from here and it will go out from here for that let's create very simple geometry the element size of uh, 0 0.8 millimeter generate for layering method we need smooth mesh near the moving wall it means we should be able to remove the layers as we move inward or we should be able to add layers as we move outward. If we would have unstructured mesh or let's say triangular mesh or tetra mesh in case of 3D simulation, we won't be able to use layering method. Or you can use when you have, for example, prism layer or boundary layer or hexa mesh like that. So that's why I have created hexa mesh for this method. Now let's move to ANSYS Fluent. We are in ANSYS Fluent. For dynamic mesh, first of all, we need to run transit simulation. In here, we don't have anything complicated in here. We will leave all setting as it is. Uh, Kmega SST model and material will be air. Our cell zone is fluid, which is air. We will define our boundary condition in a moment. First, let's move to dynamic mesh. As I mentioned earlier, in dynamic mesh, we have two boxes. One, how do we do our meshing? Other one, how do we move our mesh? Because in dynamic mesh, we have to move our mesh. Today, we will start with layering. And for mesh movement, we will not be using any option from here today, but we will introduce our custom movement. There are different ways of moving mesh. We will go one by one in detail. In layering, we can directly go to create or edit mesh or before that we can check the setting. For layering, there are two methods, height based and ratio based. Both of these methods more or less same. In height based, it checks the height of the entire layer and it's split based on this factor. For example, if the height of the next layer is 1.4 times the previous layer in this case so it will split that layer in two and so that's why it's called split factor and collapse factor it means when the element will be reduced by 20 percent the entire layer it will collapse that into the next uh, layer Ratio based, it is essentially the same method, but instead of a layer, it works on the localized size of the cell. So it checks the height of each cell or it tries to maintain the size of each cell based on these you know, factors. So we will stick to the height base and then we can go to the create and edit mesh. Before that, just analyze your geometry. When this wall will move down, so it means the movement of this wall will be like rigid body. As this wall will move up and down, the inlet and outlet boundary, they will change. Because as it will move down, 
this length will decrease this length will decrease and vice versa when it will go up the inlet and outlet their length will increase it means we will have two kind of motion this moving wall which will be rigid body motion and this inlet and outlet there will be deformation so that's what exactly we have to do here and there will not be any change in the bottom we can say inlet it is deforming and uh, we will check in the mesh option whenever there will be deformation we can define how our cell should change here our global setting it has taken by default but we can define our setting which will maintain the size and uh, the quality of this mesh for that zone scale info it means it will provide the information of our actual element size in our geometry because we have very uniform cells and you can see it's 0.7 millimeter or we can use same size or approximately same size let's call it 0.8 millimeter minimum and maximum as well as 0.8 millimeter you can change little bit that's okay it doesn't matter and deforming would be inlet so we are in the meshing option it will be smoothing and remeshing that's fine but because we are using layering method so it will add and remove layer create same we will do for our outlet it will remember our setting we can say create then our moving wall this moving wall it is a rigid body motion it is asking for the cell height of adjacent zone and we know it is 0.8 millimeter and it is constant okay then we will come to the motion attribute here we have to define how our wall should move as i mentioned there are different method one is you can use these options where you have to define your setting other one you can use udf or profile today we will be using profile i will show you how profile will look like so we want to move our wall like a sinusoidal wave for that i have created some data here are time and i have just created this function it's a simple sinusoidal function so it will show up and down movement with time we want to use these two here are time and here are movement we want to use this one as a profile in profile i have a detailed video but i will go again you can create a simple profile there you need data in this format here is the name of your profile we are calling it by motion whatever you can call then because i am providing point so that's why i have written point and how many points i am providing number of points these are 41 then you have to provide two vector first vector is of time the entire time which is by 0.1 increment till here and the second it should be y v underscore y because it's a y, uh, y velocity if you would write x it would be x velocity fluent will recognize this name that is why it should be v underscore y i have given all those 41 points and this entire thing should be enclosed in parentheses that's the very simple format of profile and the extension should be dot prof there are two method of reading profile but before that let me go to console so that we could read our message you can go to file read and here is profile you can read from here alternative in physics here is in zones you have profile and from here you can read i am just reading my profile the same text file which i had shown you earlier here you can see it is showing the profile has been read then this one is important there are different method of interpolation constant it is piecewise constant so it means the it will read profile in the form of steps inverse distance it is kind of a weighted interpolation you can check i think it's pretty straightforward maybe i will show you some other time but i am using inverse distance it will not affect our simulation results okay 
now we have two deformation but we haven't done anything with the rigid body we can go back create edit and we were in the moving wall and rigid body you can see now why motion has been added from this profile check again meshing motion it's okay you don't need to do anything else uh, and we can say create and our zone has been added and close here you can see inlet deforming outlet deforming and moving wall at this point you should save your case because uh, you can create uh, preview mesh motion if you do that you will not be able to recover your mesh at zero time so first let's uh, display zone motion here start time let's start from zero time step 0 0.01 i will show you it is critical and uh, then number of step let's say because uh, our profile is four second and so we want to have number of step 400 it means it will show the movement till four second and you would see movement of this zone it will show the movement only of moving wall preview and you can see our wall is moving for a second i can show you the entire mesh for that uh, first let me create the mesh zone edges display our entire mesh is here and now we can preview mesh motion as i said before doing mesh motion you should save your case time step let me do it 0 0.01 number of time steps 400 and if i will do preview you let me zoom in would be able to see the up and down movement of this layer preview and that's how our mesh will move the movement really depends on the magnitude that uh, we have defined over here i used 0.3 uh, I use 3 millimeter. Coming back, I was saying the time step is uh, important. In one time step, your mesh should not move more than one element. How we can make sure for that? Let's go back to our uh, Excel. Here is the time step. Let's instead of 0 0.01, if I would have used 0.1. In 0 0.1, this one indicate our motion so in point 0.1 second our mesh movement will be how much uh, 1.8 millimeter and our element size is uh, 0.8 millimeter so it means if we would have used point 0.1 second the mesh movement would have been 1.8 millimeter which is more than one cell and our mesh would fail anyway we have defined our mesh and everything and we have seen how our mesh would move now we can run our simulation so my call is not on the simulation but uh, just to show you uh, boundary condition instead of velocity i want to use mass flow inlet and the flow rate let's use three gram per second i know i don't know if it is good or bad but anyway apply and close we don't want to do anything else but yes activity uh, let's uh, save our simulation because we have 400 time step i don't want to save too many let's save at every 10th time step that's it okay and uh, we can create our uh, animation i have created mesh then we want to define our solution animation i will go to the animation new and i will call mesh animation you can do for all others as well mesh okay we have created this mesh animation now when we will run simulation this animation will be transported here which we would be able to run so now let's right click initialize and calculate our simulation is running as soon as simulation will be finished i will show you the results our simulation has finished 
now let's check our animation playback and you can see our mesh animation is here we should be able to run this one and you can see it was too fast uh, we can make it slower yes here that speed let me make it slower and now it is really slow okay let me stop and somewhere in between and uh, again now i can run you can see the movement of the mesh that's how our mesh would move during our simulation i can show you the animation of our velocity profile as well as our uh, pressure profile let me stop here we could have created same animation for velocity and pressure over here or we can go to cft post there i can show you those animation okay we are in cft post first let's uh, create a contour for velocity and then animate that contour velocity and uh, i want to have a velocity for all of them it should be velocity i want to have 50 and uh, apply let me call it okay yes local 0 and 0 0.36 that's the range of our velocity uh, for animation let's go to the tool here is the animation pane this one is our frames we are starting from first frame and let's animate this one and you can see as wall move downward the velocity inside increases and as it moves upward velocity decreases anyhow that's how you can use the lyric method for dynamic mesh that's it for today thank you for watching and see you in the next video